a pestilent prey. While the demons and creatures of all the four Chaos Gods are terrifying and monstrous to behold, those created by the Plague God Nurgle are undoubtedly the foulest and most disgusting, if not in mind, then certainly in body. Their corporeal forms, as they march forth from the Garden of Nurgle deep within the realm of Chaos, are bloated, corpulent and ripe with countless horrific diseases. They are harbingers of decay and rot, heralds of misery and hopelessness, and only the purest of warriors can stand against them. It is believed that directly or indirectly, Nurgle is responsible for all the greatest plagues and famines that have ravaged and consumed the lands of the world through the centuries. The sorrows of the lepers and the fears of the sick are his greatest fascination. Many of us believe that we are living in the dusk time of the world, and we might be right. May Sigma forgive us as we bring this knowledge to you, for these are heretical writings and thoughts. But this must be shared to warn the scholars that will come after us. This is a warning of the growing danger that is now gnawing at the doors of our very existence. The putrescent stench of chaos and its terrible influence is now rooted deep within our souls, and there is no escape from that despair. Now, we will go into the realm of Nurgle and explore the particularities that shape this chaos god. May Sigma protect us as we go deep within the realm of chaos, and may he guide our souls as we traverse this unforgiving place. Oh, great Nurgle, accept this offering of blood and filth. Witness my devotion and send your might to slither through my clotted vein. The Plague God's realm is depicted by scholars and historians as a gigantic, monstrous garden of unimaginable foulness and rampant life. Time and space shrinks and expand in this place, as so does life and death. To be trapped in the gardens of Nurgle is to be imprisoned in an incomprehensible realm of suffering and despair. Unimaginable pains and diseases break the will and strength of any being for what feels like an eternity, and uncountable are the souls that have been lost as they surrender themselves to Nurgle, screaming for some respite and deliverance from their suffering. Nurgle, as the generous god he is, answers quickly to these damned souls, and he gives his gifts to them, to the horror of the supplicant souls. Nurgle does not offer a cure or respite. Far from it. Instead, they are given a strength to endure even more pain. The resilience to become one with the torment. The plague god does not allow his subjects to die. They walk the gardens as infected beings, not alive, but not dead, and they roam there spreading and mixing diseases as they go. Amidst fetid swamps and twisted plant life, Demons of all shapes and forms trudge and gamble as the land and even the elements themselves are constantly twisted and reborn again and again in a never-ending cycle of disease, death and rebirth. It is a place of never-ending agony and despair. Creatures rot, only to be reshaped again, given new life just to be broken and consumed again moments later. The giver of life and death is generous, and nothing is ever wasted, only reborn as different manifestations of disease. It is said that Nurgle's power is the one that most fluctuate of all the four Chaos Gods. 
It is apex, when the metaphysical epidemics ravage the world, and even the stars themselves, they fall into remission, as the tides of sickness burn themselves out. Yet, his powers rise again as the sickness and corruption begin to spread once again, consuming it all. Entropy is everlasting, as is the presence of Nurgle in the realms. Corruption. The domain of Nurgle is full of impossible displays of colours and beauty that betray the horrid perversions that lie within its plague-smothered inhabitants. Those who survive long enough to explore the garden may discover the fields of tongues rotting under the influence of Nurgle's latest experiments, or trees composed entirely of mortal flesh. As the experiments of the Plague Father change, so too do the fetid lands he commands. At the pinnacle of the god's power, his tendrils can be found snaking into the lands of his brothers their reach ever-expanding alongside his power. In times of devastating pandemics, his power has even grown to overshadow his Chaos Brothers, earning their respect and trepidation, as well as their hate and revulsion. The Grand Cultivator of Nurgle's Plague Gardens is none other than Horticulus Slimux, a dour and pragmatic creation who some scholars say was the first plague bearer to be created. He sits astride a massive molluscoid steed named Mulch, ploughing the fields until he is summoned by his master to plant the seeds of the garden throughout the mortal realm. However, he is also sent to reap what is sown, culling the enemies of the plague legions with a set of rusty pruning shears and leaving trails of rich soil where the inhabitants of Nurgle's garden can flourish. Enshrined in the centre of the garden is Nurgle's ancient homestead. One can find an enormous building rife with rotten wood and fungus encrusted walls that creak under the sweeping winds of contagion. An impossibly large, rotting chair sits alone on the veranda overlooking the gardens and orchards of trees bearing rotting fruit for the Plague Father himself. A record of every creation made by Nurgle can be found in the attic, where a cadre of plague bearers constantly catalogue the jars of rotting, plague-ridden souls that are cursed to wither for all time. Within the kitchen sits Nurgle's prized possession, a black cauldron large enough to hold the contents of the mortal world's oceans that he labours over for untold eons to concoct new and horrific diseases. This cauldron is said to contain every disease in the world and beyond. Adorning the walls of the room are shelves displaying neatly organized and festering ingredients that the Plague Father adds to his experiments before dumping the result into the mortal world as plague-cursed rain that dooms kingdoms, armies, nations and individuals alike. Nurgle himself is said to be an impossibly vast, gigantic mound of rotting flesh, ridden with all the diseases of the world, with open sores and gaping wounds in which his lesser minions cavort and frolic. His gigantic body is bloated with corruption and exudes an overpowering stench. His skin is greenish, leathery and necrotic, its surface pockmarked with running sores, swelling boils and numerous signs of infestation. Weeping pustules ooze filth, and his bowels constantly issue putrescent waste. Nurgle's inner organs, rank with excremental decay, spilled through the ruptured skin to hang like obscene fruit around his girth. From these organs burst tiny demons, which chew on the rotting bowels and suck upon the nauseous juices within. 
Beneath his fingernails, maggots and other carrion feeders lay eggs around which develop cysts that periodically burst open and spew their rancid payloads. Nurgle is depicted hunched over his cauldron of poxes, humming cheerfully as he brews with joy the infinite diseases to unleash upon the material and immaterial realms alike. The gigantic mountain of filth that is Nurgle is made up of all the feelings of despair and hopelessness that the beings in the mortal world experience. The grandfather of all diseases spreads his corruption and filth all across the lands to cause unimaginable suffering, and thus gaining more strength in the realm of chaos. Grandfather Nurgle is said to be as generous as he is malignant. He is seldom described as a selfish and spiteful god. Instead, he is said to be more than content to share his diseases, bacteria, and epidemics without remorse. His plagues are gifts bound to be received by all. To spread the transforming virulence and corruption is his goal. Like a plague that spreads silently in the body until it's too late, so the corruption of Nurgle spreads through the world until all is doomed to succumb agonizingly to the terrible diseases, only to be reborn again as something new and twisted, reshaped by the will of the Great Corrupter. Deep within the Garden of Nurgle, the Plague God's favored servants have toiled without rest to cultivate for him new agents of decay, corruption, and misery. The greater demons of Nurgle are amongst the most horrific creations known to the mortal realm and the warp alike. The form and personality of a great unclean one is a near replica of their creator, with leathery skin and horrific wounds that leak chunky and poisonous pus. They are bloated mounds of flesh and rot, but they are no mere brutes. Each is a shrewd, cunning creature, a capable warlord and sorcerer full of strength, dark humor, and Nurgle's most potent plagues. Nurglings burst from the pustules, coating the necrotic organs that drape through their rotting skin, left to an existence of being crushed, eaten or shaken free to spread pestilence. The air around these monsters is corrupted with every contagion known to the Dark God, and they waddle across the battlefield, muttering jokes so foul that the souls of any who hear them shrivel. They command their armies with joy in their twisted souls. Their paternal bond they share with those they command leads them to be sentimental about the accomplishments of those who call the Great Unclean Ones Father Nurgle. While the Great Unclean Ones focus on spreading the diseases of Nurgle far and wide, the one named Kugath has all his attention focused on creating the perfect plague, the epitome of disease, a pox so powerful that it can even infect the gods themselves. Kugath has been known in history by many names. The Plague Weaver, the Pox Maker, the Fetind Brewmaster, and many more names and titles. Scholars of all disciplines shiver when they hear this name spoken aloud. On his quest for the ultimate disease, he is one of the most willing of Nurgle's demons to go out into the mortal realms to test his creations and to gather subjects and ingredients for his unique and horrific experiments. There is no count as to how many toxic creations have been brought to existence by the twisted combinations that Kugath brews in his cauldron. This unholy being is forever fascinated by the breeding of new and virulent life, and the thousands of subjects he has caged in his putrid mansion, mortal and demons alike, are his ingredients. Rotagus Rainfather is another extremely dangerous being. He is a dark magus that uses rituals and arcane knowledge to spread Nurgle's vile diseases. 
They may not necessarily look it, but great unclean ones are dangerously intelligent. They are scientists, horticulturists, and biologists at heart, and they love delving into the natural order of things and finding new ways to turn things to ruin and rot. Rain father, bringer of plenty, we beseech you, bathe us in your rain, and to you our praises will be offered. The bulk of Nurgle's army is populated by plague bearers, horrific creations that personify all that the Dark God is, with their cyclopean faces, weeping sores and bloated forms that have split to reveal the rotting entrails within. They are created from the tainted souls of mortals who were slain by the most horrific of the God's creations, Nurgle's Rot. A disease that causes one's body to swell and rot like a corpse, yet keeps them from death until they welcome the disease into their soul and submit themselves to Nurgle for all eternity. Those who have distinguished themselves in the service of the Lord of Pestilence are granted a rot fly to use as a mount, a beast of Nurgle that has festered malice in its soul and has been betrayed by those it holds in confidence. To those mortals who resist Nurgle's rot for long enough to garner the Plague Father's sight are reshaped into a pox bringer, a herald of Nurgle with a head of twisting antlers atop a form broader and taller than a plague bearer, and a jovial disposition with a revolting sense of humour. These chosen act as lieutenants amongst the Plague Legion's Talibans enacting the commands of the great unclean ones and slaying the champions of their enemies with twisted enchantments or by unleashing devastating blows from their extremely toxic plague swords that have been dipped within Nurgle's cauldron. The bulky, bounding beasts of Nurgle are amongst the friendliest and most cheerful of all of Nurgle's demons as there is actually little room for hate in their minds. Yet, they fail to realize that their titanic bulk and rancid, extremely toxic slime are fatal to their mortal playmates, meaning that they invariably almost always suffer a moment of disappointment before shambling off to find new friends to play with, leaving only chunks of rotten meat behind. The anatomy of these beasts has very little to do with natural biology, and their shapes and sizes vary greatly. Of the infinite diseases that exist in the realm of Nurgle and beyond, it is Epidemius who is the chosen tallyman to catalogue all of the Plague Lord's toxic creations. The burden of the tallyman is unending, as are the uncountable diseases and variants that exist. A dedicated group of Nurglings attend to Epidemius in his never-ending quest, and they are always busy doing paperwork and classifying each disease as they see it. There is a story that tells of the unholy bargain that Epidemius and Malekith made. In the year 635 of the Imperial Calendar, the Taliman of Nurgle appeared in Nagaroth, seeking to claim the soul of a cursed Malekith as payment for dark alliances of the past. Safe behind powerful sorceress wards, the Witch King set his armies against Epidemius. However, prepared for treachery, the plague creature soon countered by calling a great host of his own. For a year and a day, Nagaroth was ravaged and torn between those two mighty armies. The war only ended when Malekith offered the souls of 10,000 kin in his stead. The offer was greedily accepted by Epidemius. The existence of the Plague God is as much a product of fear, horror, revulsion and despair that is felt and manifested in the mortal world. This can explain why his mortal servants and warriors of chaos who worship Nurgle appear so wretched and disgusting to all sane eyes. 
Their purpose is to inspire fear and terror, as it is to spread disease and suffering, and they do so very effectively. Thanks to their generous gifts and boons that the Plague God bestows upon his subjects, be they mortal or from another realm, they are sure to cause reactions of disgust in their victims as they recoil in fear. In addition to this, fear and outright terror very often lead to feelings of helplessness and despair. Both of them are said to empower the Lord of Decay. But why would any mortal want to worship Nurgle? Of all the Chaos Gods, the Lord of Decay seems the most abhorrent and disgusting as all his servants are rotten and diseased. Turning to his worship is to embrace decay and disease wholeheartedly. Perhaps it is the resilience that Nurgle gives to his followers, the thing that draws them in. The strength to endure anything, and the knowledge that nothing would be able to break them, as Nurgle provides all the resilience one might need to endure and face any challenge. This can be one reason, at least maybe for the most ambitious of beings, seeking an upper hand against their enemies. But the most accepted theory is that subjects that give themselves to the Plague God do so as a final pledge, as a supplication for mercy and a demand for deliverance against the terrible consuming diseases that Nurgle releases upon them. Uncountable are the souls lost to despair that come to accept that the only way out of their suffering is through giving themselves in inviting and embracing the pain that burdens them, and in doing so, they become something more, something less. An avatar of Nurgle, a spreader of disease, another vector for the infinite poxes that need to be gifted to more and more subjects. I see a world drowned in fire and plague where madness is the only reason, and death is the only respite. An army of Nurgle is one of the most horrific things to witness as a human being. Twisted abominations that should not exist limp and advance in a slow but determined way. Their way of making war is by dragging down the enemy into a war of attrition that they are destined to lose. Being disgustingly resilient and extremely poisonous to their core, the armies of Nurgle can withstand tremendous amounts of punishment as they spread the thousands of diseases that will eventually bring the enemy down in an agonizing pain. When a host of Nurgle approaches, the first thing one notices is a bowel loosening foul odor that makes all around sick before they even get into contact. The sky darkens as thousands of black flies choke the air, announcing the arrival of the demonic hosts of the great grandfather Nurgle. Trees twist as if in pain, and the land turns dark. Terrified we were but still would have held our ground had the demons attacked with only blade and fang. Yet as they approached, a strange madness filled our ranks. Men who had been comrades for decades tore at each other's eyes and throats. Yellowed pus and plump maggots dribbled from the wounds in a ceaseless flow, until the ground was slippery with the putrefaction of our comrades. Those of us that survived were too busy retching and voiding our bowels to look to our own defence. When close combat begins, the screams of terror and pain can be heard all across the battlefields. To come to blows with an army of Nurgle is to fight the inevitable and to be prey to an agonising death. To be touched by a plague weapon is to know excruciating pain. 
It is the seal that marks an infected individual with the contagion of one or more of the many thousands of different diseases that exist. Nurgle's rot, the red pox, or an infinity of other afflictions can be obtained by just being scratched by any dangerous plague weapons. Bubonic axes, rusted knives, massive flails, and many other terrible weapons are wielded by the servants of Nurgle as they advance inexorably towards their enemies. When the doomed foes of Nurgle face their inevitable downfall, thousands of diminutive Nurglings swarm over their bodies, picking at eyeballs and playing all manner of foul games with the discarded entrails. In the year 111 of the Imperial Calendar, a great demonic horde advanced and corrupted everything in their path over the world's edge mountains, bringing ruin in its wake. Not one single demon led this massive horde, as it was too numerous to be guided by a single will. But it was Kugath Plaguefather who led the attack on the dwarf capital of Karazakarak the mightiest of dwarf holds, just as he had done 5,000 years before. Under the Plague Father's direction, the demons assailed the dwarf defenders with every contagion ever to curse the world. Many honorable dwarfs fell to the contagions, most of them suffering a slow and agonizing death. Others quickly consumed by strange infections that seemed to devour them alive. The toll was great. Yet, as in Kagath's last assault on these grounds, the tenacity and stubbornness of the dwarfs proved too much for even his most prized and exotic plagues. The demons breached three layers of the defense mounted up in Karazakarak, but four others remained unsullied by their hands. The terrible siege was eventually lifted, and Kagath himself was banished by the stout and vengeful arm of King Stromli Axehand. Fear is the first step on the road to his hell and hopelessness is the chair in which he binds his slaves. Sorrow is his nourishment, horror gives him form. He is our impotence to resist the ravages of time, and he is our morbidity. Nurgle is the nauseating lord of the plague, who is always festering and corrupting everything spreading and rotting entire civilizations. He is the architect of all rot and corruption, be it physical, moral, or ideological. It is he who unleashes the terrible diseases that take such horrific toll on the inhabitants of the old world and beyond, and who can claim that he is truly free from his grasp. On this channel, we are putting together narrative Total War cinematic battles and Warhammer lore videos. A special thank you goes to our Patreon supporters who help us in the making of more content. You can also join Patreon and earn extra perks while supporting the videos to come. Find the link in the description below. Make sure to subscribe, and thank you for watching. See you on the next one.